Hi everybody, welcome to the video section of our Launch Metrics Support Center. Today, we're gonna to be covering how to create a new event, how to search for our event name, and how to make our event the active event. At this point, hopefully you know how to get to your events platform um, within your Launch Metrics site. If you are not sure how to do that, please reference um, some of our other support videos that do talk about how to log in and uh, change modules successfully. Once you're in the event manager of events, to create the event, please click on the plus icon that says create event. Once I click on this, you're gonna notice that there's gonna be fields that are in red with a red asterisk. Those are required fields. I have to fill out those, those, that information. Event name. So I'm gonna call my event our support center training video. Seating, um, is my event no seating? So is this, is this a, a seated event um, or is it a presentation? If I select seated event, that's going to allow me to utilize the chart builder. So we can go ahead and for now, we'll go ahead and select seated event and take a look at the chart builder a little bit later. Event start date. So if I click on the calendar, this is where I would pick the, the date of my event. We'll go with July 4th. Uh, the event time, so what I can do here, this is in 24 hour format, so just be mindful of, of that. So if your event is at four o'clock in the afternoon, um, you know, try not to be hastily when you're filling this out and select 04, because that's gonna say 4 a.m. So by checking off this box, you're always gonna see the time in a 12 hour format, uh, which is what most people in, in North America are used to. So I'll go ahead and I'm gonna select 1600 and make that four o'clock. Uh, now if I had my event go into the, the next day, I could then select um, an end date for the future and that would create my event as a multi-day event. My time zone is New York and my event location. So that's gonna, um, that's gonna be pulling from our company manager within our contacts module. So if I'm hosting my event at the Launch Metrics New York office, if I type that in and I have that, that location, that company already in my, G, in my contacts, uh, I can just go ahead and select that location. If I were to type in the location and I receive no results, by clicking on my plus icon, this allows me to create the new, the new venue as a company. Event type, so this is all internal. Um, it is required, but it, no matter what you select, the, this is just an internal way to, to keep track of what your events are. So we'll go with a, a runway show, for example. The event email, so this email is by default the email that's going to show up as the send from email and the reply to email when you do start working on your events mailing template. This is also gonna be the email that does receive messages if you do configure the notify with RSCP changes after. So that means if I put my event email in, and if I do wanna utilize this option, so I wanna be notified, I wanna receive an email at this email address, anytime an invitee changes their RSCP, let's go with July 3rd. So if my event is on July 4th, I wanna know the day before uh, if anyone goes and changes their RSVP, I wanna receive that notification. Now, as you begin to event manage your, your, your event, uh, you're gonna be coming in here and you're gonna be you know, keeping track of the RSVPs. So, I would not suggest setting this date for the day that you send out your invitations because you're gonna get an email every single time someone changes their RSVP that's gonna overload um, probably your inbox and, and be a little bit too much to manage. That's why you come into the platform every day and, and check on that. So you notify that RCP changes after. This is really typically used um, either the day of the event or the day before the event. Allocated seats and allocated standing. This is just for reference um, as well as the event season. So you don't need to put an event season in here uh, you can if you'd like to do that for reference. Same thing with seats and standing. This is just an easy way for you to know that, okay, there's 200 seats in my venue and I have uh, room for 
100 standing invitees. So that's just for reference. The system's not going to cap, you know, your ability to add more people or seat more people at the number 200. Default guest limit. So uh, allow invitee guests. So that is, um, you know, very simple question here. Are you allowing your invitees that you invite to the event? Are you allowing them to bring a guest? If the answer is no, we uncheck that box. If the answer is yes, we check that box off. And I would suggest using the default guest limit as the word select. And then within your invitees manager, which we're going to take a look at in future videos, that's where you're going to be able to pick and choose which invitee can bring X amount of guests. If I use this drop down and I do select two, Every single invitee that gets sent the RSCP invitation email, they're going to have the ability to add in two names, two guests that they, that they choose. Uh, so not always do PR teams want to, to do that. So um, by leaving your guest limit as the word select, it puts the power in your hands to pick and choose which invitee can bring however many guests you'd like to give them. Um, so hopefully that is clear. RSCP phone number, at this point in the recording, that number does not push uh, to any place in the event page. So that you can leave blank. The RSVP notes, uh, that note is gonna show up at the RSVP landing page for your invitees. So for a dinner party, notes that, that are typically used, please you know, let us know of any allergies, for example, if any food allergies. For, for a seated event or you know larger event any, any event um, you, you, we've seen in the past uh, notes such as you know kindly RSVP before a certain date so I'll go along with that one I'm going to write kindly RSVP before June 30th and eventually we're going to see exactly where we find that information the event hashtag so that currently as of this recording does not push to anywhere uh, so you don't need to actually put anything in there Invitation image, so this is the image that's going to show up when we create our event and if we post our event to GPS radar. So the image that we place here um, is not the same image necessarily that's going to be put on our events mailing template. Uh, this image is just going to be what's seen on GPS radar. So I can go ahead, I'll find an event, or sorry, I'll find an image. And just searching through here. Uh, I'll go with our launch metrics logo that I have here. So that's my invitation image. Uh, if this event was going to be published on GPS radar, this would be the image that, that the teams would see. Um, now, same thing with the event description. Any sort of description that I do put in here would show up on my event description on my GPS on GPS radar um, at that in that event page. Now, each event that you do create is going to need to be associated to a GPS radar brand profile page. Um, so if you're a brand, you should already have your brand name in there. If you are an agency, you should see the list of all your clients already in there. Um, if you are creating an event and you don't see your brand profile that you're looking to make um, or use for the event that you're creating, please reach out directly to uh, the, our launch metric support team and we can help you get started on building that brand profile. If you do have any questions regarding brand profiles, uh, please also reach out to, to our Launch Metrics support team and we can definitely talk to you more about that. So for now, I'm gonna select Launch Metrics. My event viewable to all GPS radar members. If I leave this box checked off, this event is gonna be published to the GPS radar events calendar and it's gonna be viewable to all members of the radar community. If I check this box off, now I, and I put my email address in here, now I've enabled not only our event to um, be published on the radar calendar for all to see, but it's gonna allow invite, it's gonna allow radar members to request an invitation. So that they can, there's a button that says request invitation, they can click on that button, and then that's where uh, the email would go directly to this message. So Really useful if you're trying to get as many people in the door to your event, if you're trying to get the word out as much as possible about your client um, or your brand, definitely a good utilization 
uh, to do this. If you're not interested in any of that, simply go ahead and uncheck everything. Um, and, you, and your event won't be published on radar uh, at all to anyone publicly. So uh, last couple things before we go and cr create the event, we'll just talk quickly about these buttons here. When you send out the RSCP invitation email template and an invitee clicks yes to RSCP, yes to your event or no, uh, an automatic yes or no RSCP confirmation email will be triggered, will be sent out. If you don't want that to happen, I would just uncheck that box. If you do want that to happen, which especially is good for Fashion Week events, please check that box off. Um, we also have a send welcome email upon check-in. So if you are using our events app um, on an iPad or iOS device, when you do mark an invitee as checked in, they're going to get an automatic email um, right after that. You know, thanking them for coming to the event. This is a really good way to, to maybe attach a, a run of show or include a, a hashtag that you want to promote for the event. So that's the way that you could utilize this within the events mailing template uh, or the events mailing section of the events platform. You'll see where to exactly edit that um, welcome check in emails template. It's there to use if you'd like, but if you wouldn't like to use that, simply leave that unchecked. Lastly, we have the enable invitee barcode usage. So this also goes to hand in hand with doing check-in for your event. So you might be used to uh, Fashion Week, and, and if you are, the Fashion Week, the invitees will show up with barcodes, and uh, there'll be people that will scan barcodes at the venue door. It leads to a very quick, very efficient, very easy check-in process. If you'd like to utilize that for your event, simply enable that invitee barcode usage. This will allow you to place a barcode within your mailing templates. So this you could put in your yes confirmation template. This you could put into an RSVP seating email template. And then all your invitees would need to do when they arrive at your event is to bring that barcode with them. And then within the events iPad or iPhone iOS app, you can, you can easily scan the barcodes to mark people as attended. Now, if you have further questions on how all that works, again, please feel free to reach out to our Launch Metrics support team. At this point, I have fulfilled all of my red asterisks, so I am ready to click on Create. Now that I've created the event, you're gonna see that the event support center training video uh, has been successfully created. So to search for that event, to find that event, all I need to do is click on the search button. I see my event in here. If I had made any errors to the, either the event time, date, location, whatever, I click on this options dropdown and I can click on edit details and this is where I can go back and perhaps I need to edit the time of my event. Maybe it's a seven o'clock event. And then click on update and that will, that will change. Using this options dropdown, there are a host of other options that, that someone can do. Um, this, these are great to go in straight to your invitee manager um, or other things that you see up here. Uh, so that makes the event active. So right now we have no active events selected. So if I, are, if I am to click on the invitees manager or the events mailing or the industry lists, anything, um, you know, all of the seating, the chart builder, all of these things are, t are giving me an error that I need to select an event first. So that's what we call making an event active. So this is gonna be my active event. This is the event that I'm going to work on today. So by clicking on my options dropdown and by going go to invitees manager, now I'm in my invitees manager and now I can begin the process of adding invitees to my event. So that's all that this video is gonna cover. Uh, we've gone ahead and we've created our event. We've went through all of the event details and what you need to do to create that. We're gonna be following up with other videos that you can view, which talk about how to actually add invitees to the event, um, which you can definitely check out. But for now, that's all that we have for this video. Thanks so much for, for watching. Um, and anyway, I hope you have a great day.